Earlier this year, my wife and I, we went to Egypt. So we were able to go to the, um, the museum in Egypt. When I reached the museum in Egypt, we were able to see the mummies. You can look at them, the mummies. I remember my wife and I went to the place. And they said, this place, you have to pay specially to get inside. We paid to enter the one. But this one, you have to special fee to get inside where the mummies are. If you know what the mummies are, these are the dead bodies, the dead pharaoh that have been preserved for thousands of years. And I remember that as we were looking, they were, they were, they were, many of them didn't live long, 45 years, 60 years. In fact, we at least saw 60 something, 55 years, 35 years. So I, I realized what it means to have the covenant of long life in that time. They, were, they lived so little, you know, and we saw 50, 55. Yeah, that was long. <laughs> Many of the pharaohs died very early, maybe because it, they said some of those mummies were, they, they checked their, they did autopsy for them, and they found that many of the diseases we have now, they had them because of the kind of food they eat, the kind of life they were living. But as we were going around, there was a particular mummy that I saw that, I, that they said, this is Hamahoten, and they said this is the, um, <laughs> the pharaoh of Moses. The first thing that came to my mind is, okay, come on. Uh, the, the, the Pharaoh of Moses died in the Red Sea. You know, how can you say this is the Pharaoh of Moses? So the guy said, I mean, this can be the Pharaoh of Moses. This is, is Hamahoten, the Pharaoh that was, a, that was in the lifetime of Moses. He was the one that, that um, Moses went to. And God said, let my people go. And he chose not to. And so, the man said to us, he said, the Bible says that and Israel saw the Egyptian dead on what? On the seashore. So, uh, Amaotel didn't die. He didn't stay on the seashore. Those, e those Israelites, those Egyptians, those chariots, the sea brought them back to the shore. And their lives, a lot of dead folks. But the, but the Pharaoh was recognized because of the way he dressed, the way he was. And so his body was brought back and preserved. So I, I, I just want to, as I began to think, this session is testimonies of the dead. Testimonies of the dead. That's what I wanted us to look at in a few minutes. Testimonies of the dead. Now, if you bring back the picture of Moses and Hama, Hamahoten was the pharaoh that was the greatest, he was the greatest king on earth at that time. Moses went to him and said, God said, let my people go. I said, the sad thing is, I was wondering, Hamahoten, what are you doing on the floor? You died like a fool. You were lying there, flies were on, on him. Fish were eating part of his body. How can the greatest king on earth... How can the greatest king on earth, the wealthiest, the strongest, the biggest king on earth, that like a fool? Says, this is my testimony. I'm a Houghton says, when, the, when I'm a king, but I did not realize on time, there's a king of kings and there's a lord of lords. There's a king that is bigger than all kings. He said, when he said to me, let my people go, I thought he was joking. I said, who is that king that will say, let my people go? And then I hardened my heart. I did not listen to him. And that's why I ended up as a fool. He said, several times, God gave me an opportunity I'm sharing the testimonies of the dead right now. The testimonies of Hamahoten were right there. He says, God gave me an opportunity several times for me to change my mind. He showed me. He brought in plagues. He brought in everything. But I had in my heart. I first depended on my own magicians. I depended on my own astrologers. They were doing the same thing that Moses did. But later on, God showed up. And they even shouted and told me that we cannot do it anymore because this is the hand of God. There's a bigger hand that is there. But still, 
I had in my heart. I refuse. I didn't hear. And that's why Hama Houghton, high the greatest king on earth, died like a fool. I struggled with sin. He says, tell them that they should keep on. They should stop struggling with God. Maybe you are here this morning. God has been speaking to you. You've had in your heart. There's a particular sin you kept on doing and doing and doing. And you know it's wrong. He says, tell them not to end up the way I ended up. Maybe I'm hiding my heart with God. God has been warning you. The Holy Spirit has been warning you against certain things. But you're doing the same thing. You're saying it doesn't matter. God, I mean, I mean, who is this God? So God showed up. He fought the battles with me. He, he helped me. There was flies. There was everything. He showed everything to let me know that he's God. But I still refuse. I wanted to do it my own way. I did it my own way. I, I, I choose not to eat the warnings that God was showing to me. That was why I, the greatest king on earth, died like a fool. That's why I'm on the seashore. The fish are sitting part of my body. Flies are one in there. That was testimony of the dead. Testimonies of Hamahoten. As this year has run to an end, are you going to be like Hammer Houghton? You are hardening your heart. If you are doing this, a particular thing you are doing, God has been warning you, sending messages to you. You are not doing, you are not changing right. The testimony of Hammer Houghton, the testimony of the dead, it says, let my people go so that they can serve me. Are you blocking the people of God? So Hammer Houghton, he says, I blocked. I thought I could stop God. I was so big in my shelf. I was the biggest on earth. And I thought nobody can stop me. I have everything under my control. But I forgot that he controls everything from over there. And make a, he can make a fool of any fool. And that was why the greatest king on earth messed up. That's why my testimony is that I refuse to allow God at the right time into my life. So I ended up like a fool. As I was thinking about it, how did I get here? What did I do? I look at another testimony of the dead. This man is called Samson. There was this big house that had a crash. Samson was anointed. He was great. In fact, it was an angel <laughs> that predicted his coming. When the house crashed, when the whole mall, the whole structure crashed, as they were looking around, there was a man that was there. He was a bit different from all of them. He was not like the Philistines. He was strong, muscular, big, mighty, great man. He had God, but his two eyes were there. He was dead. How can a man with such integrity, with such honor, with such grace, such anointing, die like a fool? Samson died like a fool. Says, Samson, what are you doing here? Your birth was predicted by an angel. They say you were anointed from the beginning. In fact, your father missed the prophecy. God sent back the angel in honor of the answer to your father. The first time you went out and lion came with your two bare hands, you tore the lion apart. The Philistines came, they got around. You used one thing to kill about a thousand Philistines. You had such honor, such grace over your life, such anointing, such power, such <laughs> glory was around you. Every battle you fought, you won in your life. But here you are, lying like a fool. You died like that. Testimonies of the dead. And he said, I had it everything. But I was a careless. 
Because everything works for me. From the beginning, I had the anointing. I had the glory. I had the presence of God. Before I cried, the anointing would call upon me. The oil was on me. But I took it for granted. The first time, Bible says, and Samson slept with an alloc. Because of sexual sin, he lost the glory. Samson could control, but could not control himself. He slept with a halot the first time. Because he did it once. The glory was still there. I did it again. I did it the second time. I did it the third time. And the glory was there, so I could not control myself. I began to sleep around. I began to lust after lost two women. High, the greatest of my time, became a fool. Because I could not control myself. The testimony of the dead. It says, here I am, I lying down. I didn't fulfill destiny. My life was wasted. I didn't do what, I've called, what God has called me to do. I died prematurely. Because of five minutes enjoyment. Because of sex, illicit sex. I ended up like a fool. Because I have no self-control. Anger made me like a fool. Because I wanted to be like the world. I want to enjoy myself. I said, I, because I feel that being, being, being a Christian, being a, it does not make, should not should stop me. I'm young. I can enjoy myself. I can do anything with my life. I'm not answerable to anybody. So I live like that. That's why I ended up like a fool. Nobody see what I do. It doesn't matter. Nobody can stop me. I'm still young. I've got my life to live. Leave me. You've enjoyed it. My parents told me when I didn't listen to them. I told them to leave me. You had your own life. Let me have my life. Get a life. Leave me alone. I was in every party. I was drinking. I was doing everything. But because the gift at the calling of God, I was without repentance, my life. So I thought it would always go like that. I eventually made the wrong choice of a life partner. Because I've always lost it. I ended up with a lost woman. I ended up in the wrong place. And so my life was destroyed because of my foolishness. When nobody was there, I had fun. When nobody was there, I drank. I took women to hotels. I did everything. Tell them not to live like that. Because for every life you live, there's a judgment. There's a day coming. For God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sweat, that shall he also reap. See, I ended up like a fool. What am I doing here? My destiny was cut short because I could not control myself. Tell them. They may be young. But freedom does not mean you can do anything you want. True freedom is living within the laws of God and believing God. Testimonies of the dead. Samson died like a fool. His eyes were scorched out by the enemy. He became blind. Wasted destiny. Wasted resources. Wasted grace. The testimony of the dead ended up like a fool. He had all the powers, but he couldn't control himself. Secret sin, secret sin, secret sin was what destroyed Samson. Uncontrollable passion was what killed me. That's why I hired the greatest of my time. The greatest youth of my time, strength of my time. I'm lying there, and the Philistines are making fun of me. And they had to bury me in mass with the Philistines. Testimonies of the dead. As we passed by, went a little bit further. We'll just do two more. He said, The Holy Spirit took me to another place and said, How are the mighty fallen? Fallen in the midst of war. Tell it not in God. 
publish it under the seat of Askelon. That was a battle that Israel went. It was so great. But that day, two people died. One of them was Saul, and the other one was Jonathan. Saul, the greatest king, the first king, the greatest king of Israel at that time, was the first king and chosen by God. How did I end up? Bible says the Philistines came and cut his head off. It was it was in the it was on the field. How would Saul end up on the field? Saul, how would he die like that? A powerful man. The man who had everything going for him. I mean, you can't beat him. Saul was all in their life. Saul and Jonathan, they were, they were so great. But how did Saul, the first king of Israel, just die like that? What are you doing here? Glory was around you. Every battle you fought, you won in your life. But here you are, lying like a fool. And Hamahoten was the pharaoh. That was the greatest, he was the greatest king on earth at that time. Moses went to him and said, God said, let my people go. I said, the sad thing is, I was wondering, Hamahoten, what are you doing on the floor? You died like a fool. You are lying there. Flies were on him. Fish were eating part of his body. How can the greatest king on earth, how can the greatest king on earth, the wealthiest, the strongest, the biggest king on earth, that like a fool? He says, this is my testimony. Amahoten says, when, the, when I'm a king, but I did not realize on time there's a king of kings and there's a lord of lords. The Bible says the following day the Philistines came to strip the dead and they found Saul and his three sons falling on the Mount Giboah. They cut off his head, stripped off his hammer, set them to the land of the Philistines around about and to make it known to the house of their idols among their people. They put his armor in the house of Ashoteth. They fasted his body. That's I'm reading Second First Samuel chapter 31. Saul died like a fool. You know, David lamented how the mighty fallen, fallen in the midst of war, published nothing God, reporting the city of Ascalon, let the daughters of Philistine rejoice, or the daughters of a circumcised exalt. O mountains of Gibeah, may there be no rain or dew upon you or your bountiful fields, for there the sheet of the mighty was defiled. The sheet of Saul is no longer anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bows of Jonathan did not turn back. O oh, daughters of Israel, weep over Saul. Who clothed you in scarlet and jewels? Who had done you your garments with gold jewelries? How are the mighty ones have fallen in the midst of battle? How are the mighty is fallen and the weapons of warfare perished? Saul, the greatest. I mean, how would he just became? That's, he's lying down like a fool over there. Saul said, this is my testimony. He said, when God made me king, I became all in all. I did not have respect for authority anymore. I was, Samuel was supposed to make a sacrifice. But I took the place. I wanted to do what the priest has been called to do. I took my place of assignment and got to another place of assignment. I was disfocused. And I lost the throne. Say, but my greatest battle came when God gave me an instruction to go and destroy a whole city and leave nothing. But I obeyed the voice of men. The men told me that let's reserve some. These are big things. He says, the voice of men was stronger than the voice of God. That is how I feel in life. Saul, obey the voice of men. Obey the voice of men. They put prayer Instead of killing everything, they reserved some. They had good intention. They had good minds. They, had, they, had, they told me the, right, the good things. But that was not what God said. 
And I should realize what God said. That God couldn't have been this serious. Somebody said, it's a hard thing for men to lie to know that God really means what he says. I learned the hard way. God said, don't really serve anything, but I did. I allowed the pressure of men. Pressure of wanting to belong. He says, go and tell them. That's how I failed. I wanted to belong. I wanted to please men. And displease God. That's why I ended up like a fool. I would rather please my cousins, my aunties, my uncles, my colleagues than please God. I know this is what God said, but this is what everybody is doing. This is what my people wanted, so I did it. And I ended up like a fool. The kingdom was taken away from me. Because I was, I love the praise of men and the praise of God. Testimonies of the day. I love the praise of men and the praise of God. That's why I ended up the way I ended up. I want to be in the best books of the, of the people that are, the happening people. When they mention names in my country, I want to be among them. At the expense of what God has told me. I know I'm not supposed to go to a party on Sabbath, but I will go because I don't want to, I don't want to displease men, but I will displease God. I know I'm not supposed to dress certain way, but I will do it because I want to please men, so that I, but I will displease God. I know I'm not supposed to walk or do some drink or do certain things, but because I, I want to please people, I want to belong, I want to do what they do, so I will displease God. So that I can have the applause of men at the expense of the hunger of God. Ah, oh, the mighty fallen. Fallen in the midst of battle. I did. I obeyed God, but not totally. And therefore, that's why I'm lying there like a fool. I didn't know that God really means what he says. When God said, do not touch the hawk, who's that? Touch the hawk. He died instantaneously. It's a hard lesson for man to know that God really means what he says. How are the mighty falling? God said, Adam and Eve, don't eat the fruit. They did. And they lost the kingdom forever. I didn't know that God really means what he says. I took God for granted. I took the word lightly. God wouldn't, God wouldn't have done this because of that. And I missed the whole. Saul became a fool. Towards the end of my life, because I couldn't hear God, I went to go and seek help. I went to go to another God. I went to go and look for, for one prayer man. I went to one man, one white man, one something, one garment, one somewhere to go and look for help. That's why I missed God. The testimonies of the dead. The testimonies of the dead. Saul, what are you doing there? because I disobeyed. God has been telling me this. Just one aspect made me miss the kingdom. The testimonies of the dead. Ah, oh, the mighty fallen. Fallen in the midst of battle. Are you here today? Are you a man pleaser? Would you rather please men than obey God? Would you do things because everybody is doing it? Would you, would you listen to the voice of man? To obey is better than sacrifice. That's what he said. Finally, we went to the New Testament. Jesus was calling his disciples. He had 12 of them. The last one. Among the disciples... A few days after Jesus died, there was a garden. And in that garden, there was a man that was hanging. He hung, and his robe fell on the floor. And Bible says his stomach got up and busted. His name was called Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot was the smartest. Of the disciples of Jesus Christ. 
Judas was the greatest of the disciples. He was the most read, according. Say, I was an accountant by profession. I was well read. I was smart. I was intelligent. In fact, that was why Jesus chose me to lead the group. Say, oh, Judas, what are you doing there? Oh, Judas, such a man with such intellect, such honor, such grace. What are you doing there? On the floor, dead, busted. You committed suicide. And you're like this. He said, son of man, tell them. I betrayed the king of kings with a kiss. I betrayed the Lord of lords. I became a betrayer. I didn't do what I was called to do. So, but it didn't just happen. I started because as we started the group, I felt I was smart. I started stealing from God. I was stealing my tight. I was stealing from the posh. I wasn't paying my tight. I said, no, I, was, I, I don't go sow seed. Instead of sowing seed, I'm the one taking the seed. But I said, I, I mean, I was stealing from the post. I was not faithful. No financial integrity. That's why I ended up the way I ended up. I thought if Jesus was Jesus, really, he would have known. No financial integrity. Every time Jesus talks, I look at him and said, I don't think, because he was not, he didn't go to the U.S. school. He was, was our master, but he was not, he didn't go to university. He didn't go to where I read. I was a chartered accountant. But my destiny was wasted. I became the betrayer. The curse came upon me because they said it's, it is best for the such person who betrayed the son of man not to have been born. How did I get there? Because I was still in little by little. I was unfaithful in little things. I was unfaithful in little things. And so Satan looked at me and made me a target and was able to use me. Are you faithful in little things? I was backbiting at the back. I was involved in conspiracy. As I started stealing, I, I said, if he's really, if he's God, he will know. He will know. He would have, messed, he would have, he should have done something about it, but he didn't do anything about it, so I feel it's okay. So sometimes I don't pay all my tithes. Nobody knows. Sometimes I don't take all my offerings. Sometimes in our office, I change figures. Sometimes at home, I do this. I cheat a little on my wife. I, you see, a little cheat here, a little cheat here. I cheat a little on, my, on the things we are doing. You know, I'm, I'm doing a little, little cheating. That's what ended me up where I am. The testimonies of the dead. I miss eternity. Because of this little thing. I missed eternity. I died like a fool. Oh, the mighty fallen. Fallen in the midst of battle. What is that little thing that you're doing that will keep you from eternity? I pray that nobody here will die like a fool. I pray that you will finish well. You will finish strong. You don't allow little things to destroy your destiny. The way... Judas Iscariot was PhD, everything you can think of, but he missed God. You won't die like Samson died. Testimonies of the dead. Little anger here. Little unruling spirits. He has an unruling spirit. Nobody can control him. I am young, I can enjoy, I can do anything in my life. Testimonies of the dead. It's too late. It will not be late for you. It will not be late for you. It will not be late for me. What is that thing that you must not carry over into the new year? You must not. No carry over in the name of Jesus. That thing that has the ability to destroy you. That's the ability to destroy you. Will you harden your heart like Pharaoh? Say, well, I don't mind, Pastor, because it's just preaching. This is preaching. It's just preaching. I hope it will not be too late. Sometimes it will be too late to change. 
The only thing is that the things that men does not see, God sees everything. And God says that you will bring everything into judgment. The things you do in secret, the things I do in secret, the things we do in secret, the things, we do, the things you do, the times you are mean to your wife, you are mean to your husband, those things, God sees everything and he brings them into judgment. Why would you like allow little, little things to destroy your destiny? The testimonies of the dead. I pray this morning. It says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according to his works. I don't know what it is, but may you not have a regrettable testimony in Jesus' name. I pray that at the end of our life we will not regret. As I close, I, I, I said to us at the beginning, I said, what a privilege of a new year, of an end of a session, and the beginning of a new one. We can make new decisions. We can say, Lord, I'm true with this kind of life. I'm true with hypocritical life. I'm true with this anger. Lord, I'm true with this sin in my life. I'm true for hardening my heart. God has been speaking to you concerning this identity. He says, now, today, Lord, I'm true with it. I'm true, I'm true. I can begin again. There's a glory in us, new beginning. Hallelujah. Thank God, because the year does not goes on. God gives us the privilege of a new year. As we enter a new year, let's give God an opportunity to do something new in our lives. The sin, remember the sin that you don't overcome, you don't overpower, we eventually destroy you. A little beer there. A little wine there. Look very unharmful today. But it has the ability of destroying your destiny. That's how you kill Samson. A little smoke can kill you. Don't be a fool. The testimonies of the dead. Let's rise up on our feet as we pray.